You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Andrew Ganaic and Justin Goddard. Good evening, everyone, and welcome into the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. I am your host, Andrew Ganaic, and alongside me is my co-host, Justin Goddard. Thanks just for tuning in to tonight's episode. You can find us on social media or on YouTube by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. We're also available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Tonight, we have a jam-packed episode for you, so let's break down the agenda. But first, Justin, how are we doing tonight? Oh, I am walking on sunshine, dude. It's been a great week to be a Bills fan. Lots Absolutely. to talk about. Yeah, yeah. So let's, without further ado, let me break down the episode. We're going to highlight some Bills-related news. We got our uh, Wandering Buffalo interview with an old friend of mine named Matt Melcher. Then we're going to jump into our position review, uh, wrap up the offense by talking about the tight ends, and we'll even talk about the special teamers, specifically the punter and the kickers. Um, we'll, after that, we'll dig into some free agents. Justin has some draft prospects for us to talk about. And then lastly, we'll preview into next week's episode. So let's jump into some Bills-related news. Uh, full disclosure, we're recording this Monday night. Um, so if we miss any news between now and when you're listening to this, the reason for that is because it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> oh, so sorry, don't, 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 uh, don't get on our too much for that. Um, we're also going to start posting videos on our Facebook page to help deliver <clears throat> help deliver breaking news faster. But here's a quick recap from everything that's happened from last week's episode to this week. John Brown, cut. Sounds like he was a little upset when he got the news. Quentin Jefferson, cut. Was he unwilling to take a pay cut? We'll never know. Vernon Butler, restructured. Mitch Morse, restructured. Matt Milano, Resigned. John Feliciano. Resigned. Daryl Williams. Resigned. How do you? How does that make you feel, Justin? We're getting the band back together, baby. I know Let's it, it feels this. real good. It feels real good. Um, some other news that you know fans might not have no, may not have heard of. Uh, Connors and Ferris put out a, the growth mindset video. You can find that on YouTube. It is so good. It is worth every minute of your time. I think it's like a 20-minute video, but it really encapsulate, uh, I'm sorry, encapsulates how awesome it is and how thankful we should all be that Sean McDermott, Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean have been here because it, it's basically like a 20-minute a synopsis of the success from – Day one to now. So, real good video. Check it out. Jordan Poirier released a social media post about his drinking. I love this guy. I, You know, that takes a lot of courage. Um, alcoholism is no joke, and I think he used the stage appropriately, appropriately to share his story. And I got to say, I think I think Jordan Poirier is the next jersey I'm getting. I, that, I, I love that guy. Man, I should have thrown on the Poirier hat. Dude, he, he's a good guy. I I love that guy. Um, Andre Roberts signed with the Texans, so it looks like we got a hole on returner and special teams. And, you know, just, we were going to lose someone. So That's the biggest problem we have going into next year. I'll, I'll sign up for that. Right. And it also looks like the Patriots are spending a lot of money to get people into town. They're getting a lot of big names, but they're paying big money for them. Cam Newton's still their quarterback? Yeah. Bah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's nice not having to overpay to get people into town for once. So I'm kind of cool with it. It's cool to watch other teams do it. Uh, Justin, do you have anything you want to say about the news that happened from last week to this week? Uh, honestly, there's going to be so much more that happens in the next coming days. Um, crazy week. I I personally didn't ever expect Milano back. If we did... I didn't think Daryl Williams was back and vice versa. I certainly didn't expect Feliciano back after, you know, the other two signings. So as far as I'm concerned, we could still upgrade or have, uh, like, draft some positional upgrades for the future. But 
as far as I'm concerned, we're one game away from the Super Bowl. Keep as much of the band together as you can, and I think Bean's doing a masterful job of that. Still saved us some cap money, too, um, going forward. Uh, Also, right before we sat down to record this podcast, um, Tyler Medikevich also just signed a one-year extension. Um, So he's a pretty key piece to the uh, special teams unit that was very strong last year. Um, I haven't seen the cap numbers as of now, but I'm guessing that was kind of probably an extension with some money moved around, so that probably freed up a little bit of cap. Um, What I am interested to see right now is they also just reported that the the Bills will not give uh, Levi Wallace the restricted free agent tender, um, which doesn't necessarily mean he won't be back. Um, Possible that he could come back at an even lower number. Um, CB2 is probably my biggest area of need right now, so it's kind of interesting to see what will happen there. Right. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's news update, and now we're going to go right into our Wandering Buffalo interview with this week's guest, Matt Melcher. Maddie, welcome in. How you doing, guys? Welcome Thanks for having in. me. Appreciate it. Yeah, special guest, old friend. <laughs> A true wandering buffalo, 716's own Matt Melcher. How you doing? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm doing well, man. Appreciate you guys uh, having me on. So, uh, yeah, born and raised in Buffalo, New York. Uh, went to high mm-hmm. school here, went to college here, and, um, you know, now I'm just uh, working for an insurance company as a claims adjuster, and I, I really can't complain. Life's good. Right. Where? What high school and uh, college did you go to? So I went to St. Joe's for high school. Hey, St. Joe's, and then we didn't even talk about that before the we show. We did not. No, and Marauders. Let's go. I ended up graduating from uh, End Trip, so I got my two year. Went down to Disney, did an internship down there. Never finished my degree. Just kind of fell into the auto industry. You know, I worked at a collision shop, and I work at uh, for an insurance company. So um, yeah, this is where I'm at now. Okay. So, word on the street is that you're planning to move again. Where to? Uh, well, my girlfriend is finishing up her last semester at grad school uh, at the University of Buffalo. So, she's been applying to a bunch of different places out of state. Uh, Tennessee, Florida, Arizona, Colorado, I want to say. So, uh, really, wherever she lands a job, you know, I'm fortunate enough for, with my job that I can just pack up and go. So, uh, wherever she lands the job, that's where we're going to go. Right. You know, those those places don't sound too bad. So. <laughs> Cross your fingers we're, for Colorado, man. It's awesome out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think uh, that's one actually one of the places I've never been with is Colorado out of those four. So um, I would definitely love to go live there, even though I've been there. But, um, yeah, I think I need, you know, I love Buffalo, obviously, but I don't like the cold. So anywhere that uh, doesn't <laughs> snow, you know, six months out of the year is fine with me. Right. Well, it sounds like wherever you go, it's going to generate a lot of good memories. So speaking of memories, I believe Justin has a good question for you. Uh, so just basically how long have you been a Bills fan? What's what's the earliest thing you can remember in like your Bills fandom memory bank? That's a great question. Um, well, I was born in 92, so I was a little young for the Super Bowl runs down there, you know, in the early 90s. So I want to say... Drew, or not Drew, uh, Doug Flutie, maybe my earliest memory, I think, um, like late 90s, early 2000s, um, you know, like Eric Moulds, Peerless Price, like those guys. You know, growing up, I was, I come from a big hockey family, so, you know, my dad, my uncles, my cousins, we all played hockey, so, um, you know, earliest Buffalo sports memory would probably be 99 with, uh, Brett, you know, Brett Hull foot in the crease, but I don't want to go that route. <laughs> Um, 99 was a rough year yeah, for Buffalo sports. Yeah, it was, it was a tough year. So, um, But, yeah, I would say probably, yeah, probably like the early 2000s when I first st- started really remembering watching Bills games, I would say that. Right. I think for me, so when I became a Bills fan, you know, you're born into it. You don't, you don't have a choice about picking your team. <laughs> right. at, least, at least that's how it was for me because when I grew up, the only NFL apparel that was in my house. And I don't know if my mom just bought it because the team was terrible and the merchandise was 
eh, was probably cheap. Always so on she clearance. Just, <laughs> yeah, so she was probably like, scarf, gloves, hats, sure. Pick it up for Andrew. Um, I just remember actually starting to pay attention to the Bills when I was in middle school. And my one friend is a huge Colts fan for whatever reason. Not really entirely sure. But I remember he was talking so much smack about how Peyton Manning was going to destroy the Bills. And I remember, yeah, you know, that's probably going to happen. But watching the game that night, or that Sunday, sorry, we almost won. But... (laughs) We lost because of a missed field goal. And that was the first time I personally remember the sting of the Bills. Definitely one of the smaller stings uh, later on um, that I would later experience. But that that's definitely my first vivid memory of the Bills. Justin, what about you? Yeah, my, my first vivid memory is also a stinger. We're not going to get into it. Same as Matt said, 99. My first vivid memory is the Music City Miracle. Um, but what I also remember about that time is I was I was a nine-year-old kid, and just even being that young, I remember everywhere we went out in Buffalo, like the Sabres were looking like they might win a cup. Bills looked like they might finally be getting back into the playoffs, making some noise. Just the whole city was electric. Everywhere you went, there was jerseys everywhere. You go... Uh, this is how old I am. I remember we'd go into the FYE store. I don't know if that was around mm-hmm. for you oh, guys. Yeah. But oh, I remember yeah. going in there in particular, and it was just like hundreds of people in there. Everybody all geared out. The music was, you know, the shout song was playing on repeat. The train horn was going like, it was just a great time to be alive. It hurt, it hurt that you're hurt a lot, but it was right. a good time to be in Buffalo. So, Matt... It sounds like you've been a Bills fan for your entire life. Can you tell us who might be responsible for you becoming a fan? I I know I kind of alluded to the reason why I'm a Bills fan, because my mom would buy that kind of merchandise and it would be all around the house. So that was my first exposure. But who's responsible for you being a Bills fan, and what did what does that person or people mean to you yeah that's a great question I mean I like I said with the hockey you know my I grew up in a hockey family so I just feel like being from Buffalo you like the buff, the bills by default obviously you know I, I can't really mm-hmm. pinpoint I, I don't think you know I don't want to out him or anything but my dad I, you know he's not a huge huge bills fan right so um I do remember growing up though I have great memories of my grandfather um order pizza go over there on Sunday shoot some pool he was big into billiards so I uh, have real good memories of, you know, Sundays going over there to do that with him. So I, I, if I had to pinpoint one person, I'd probably say my grandpa. I, I would say probably as I got older too, you know, middle school, high school, your friends really have an influence on that too as well. You know, hang around more of your boys and start to get groups of friends and things like that. So I would say maybe my grandpa or just my friends in general. So it sounds like though your grandpa and your friends and, you know, even though your father wasn't uh, the biggest Bills fan, they were the most influential people to you. Yeah. Definitely. And yeah. they sound like they're big parts of your life now, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, my grandfather's not with us anymore. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm a big family guy. So, you know, I um, got a bunch, uh, bunch of nephews and a niece, and I got another one on the way. My sister's pregnant. So, um, yeah, definitely family-oriented. Oh, well, uh, I'm... You know, first off, I'm am sorry to hear about your grandpa, but um, con- congrats on the uh, the being an uncle twice, three times, four. Uh, this will be five. No, I have yeah, Melcher, five. Number uncle five, fifth time, the five P. Yeah, five P. Number, number five. So <laughs> I had to think about it too. I forgot there's so many of them. The first five, five P. Feet of yeah. Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uncle so there, I think man. you alluded to earlier that you know. You lived in Nashville for a little bit. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Um, I, I just know you, so I, I, I know you've lived in Nashville a little bit. How, does, how did the Bills' life there compare to the one in Buffalo? Weaker, better, just different? Apples, yeah. Apples, oranges? So I was down there, so my girlfriend had an internship mm-hmm. last summer, 
Um, so she was down there for the summer, and I, I went with her, tagged along for the ride, as I say. So I, was, I wasn't down there for the actual NFL season, unfortunately, so I, I can't really okay. speak to that. Um, I'm sure it's not easy, you know, being around all those Titans fans for the whole season. But um, I did wear the Josh Allen jersey and, and a Bills hat, you know, all, all summer. And there were a couple times we were out in public, and I got a gold Bills from, Ooh, from people down there. So um, That's just that, a great feeling. That, that, a great feeling you know what i mean it's just yeah it's just the way we greet each other around here you know so to get that you know a thousand miles away from home was was definitely awesome but yeah unfortunately i can't really speak too much on like you know especially because of covid obviously a lot of things were shut down so um for a good majority of the summer so i wasn't able to like go to like a bill's backer bar or, or do too too much exploring we still went out every so often uh when we okay. could but is there anything yeah. down in nashville that kind of reminded you of home or just is it just completely different i think it's completely different i mean like we lived in east nashville so we had to drive into the city to go do stuff you know it was only like a 10 minute drive mm-hmm. 10 15 minute drive but the way we went in uh nissan stadium was right was right there like right in your face so like every time we drove in and out to go home i'm looking at you know the titan stadium and it was like i'm jealous you know it's i wish we had you know i, I love the ralph and you know you know, Orchard Park and all the history and whatnot. But, I mean, you can't lie. I mean, if we had a stadium downtown on the waterfront, that would be that would be awesome. Yeah, it wouldn't, so. it wouldn't be the worst thing. I, I think that would look actually very cool. And I love it. He yeah. still calls it the Ralph, too. Hey, I mean, that that's the all, Ralph. all that's... I know it is. <laughs> uh, that's all. What is it? Bill's well, Field, it I called, think, right? Like, right now it's Bill's Field. New Era Bill's Field. Stadium. And now it's or Bill's Stadium. Bill yeah. Stadium, yeah, because they because yeah, New York lost yeah, the so. Buffalo no, football always, stadium, yeah, yeah something. Yeah. Like that. It will always yeah, be the Ralph real. to me. I mean, the man's out there in the front shaking people's hands. You you might as well just <laughs> cement the name forever. All right. um, I agree. Anyways, you're anticipating a big move near in the near future. Have you personally given thought to how it will affect you as a fan and your connection for? the city the team what do you think how do you think that move is going to change you that's a great question um I, honestly i haven't put too much thought into it um you know I'm, I'm a member of bill's mafia for life you know so i don't care if i live in antarctica you know i'm still gonna rub you know the, my josh allen jersey on sundays and everything like that i think if anything if i you know if i had to think about it i'd probably be a bigger fan because i'm gonna go let's say Nashville, for example, or anywhere, you know, you're going to be around Titans fans or Cardinals fans or Jags fans or whoever's down in Florida. Right. So, you know, I think I'd be more of, um, you know, a bigger fan just because I want to rub the bills around people who aren't the bills and just kind of carry the legacy, so to speak. Right. You're not going to let them convert you to another team. Are you? No. It has happened in the past. <laughs> not even, not even, uh, not even, a, um, no, I'm not, not going to call this person out, but a mutual so for those of you who don't know, Mel- Matt Melcher and I used to work with each other at this restaurant called The Melting Pot out in Buffalo. And this one individual moved to Arizona, and I know for a fact her, her um, hockey team fandom has changed from the Sabres to the Coyotes, so... I don't, I mean, you know, the Sabres are, you know, I, 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 I get it. I was going to say, after this season, I can't right. blame her, I don't think. But this season, more like the last, I don't know, 10? Yeah, I'm being nice. First, man. it goes the hockey team. Who knows? Who knows? I, I you know, I, I have a lot of faith in you, Matt, that that won't happen. I uh, appreciate man. that. Yeah, no, I, lo- I love the Bills too much, you know, to even, you know, and the Sabres, too. I'm not going to put the Sabres yeah. on. I love the Sabres. Maybe I haven't watched them as much as mm-hmm. I should have past three or four years to be honest with you you know but um no i i'll, I'll be a life as long as the bills are in the nfl yeah I'm they're a bills pretty fan. unwatchable in my opinion at least at this point <laughs> but i i could spend my entire day watching the entire bills speaking the speaking of spending yeah. days justin uh so you touched on a little bit of you know the bills legacy all that so you got one day, one day. you can hang out with any buffalo bills player from bills history who are you hanging out with what are you doing Wow, the whole history, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Bringing the heat today. Yeah, you brought the heat on that question. I I might have to cop out and just say Josh Allen because I I love this dude and I, everyone in Buffalo does. You know, I'm not alone when I say that. But 
Um, this guy has given us so much hope. You know, I mean, not, not just him. I can't just pin everything on him, obviously. But um, I think he's just such a real down-to-earth, you know, nice guy, polite guy. Comes from Fireball, California, small town. Brings that work ethic, you know, to college. Everyone over- overlooks him at college. Comes to Buffalo and just proves everyone wrong. So um, I don't want to, you know, not say like Thurman Thomas or anyone like that. But, you know, I, I just... I would, I would love to hang out with Josh. I feel like I feel like he's such a cool guy. Nobody's gonna fault you for that answer. No, yeah. I don't. I hope not. What about you, Justin? Who would you spend? Oh, you know mine. Who? It's my guy, Kyle Williams. Oh, of course, I should have known better. <laughs> All day, every day. Yeah, that's that's the, those are solid answers. I don't know. Uh, my girlfriend got me uh, tickets to. He was doing a charity uh, event in Rochester. Um, that he spoke at. I was able to meet him. I got his autograph and all that. And uh, wow. his his speech kind of just one thing stuck with me. And he was just talking about, you know, how it translates to every phase of his life, um, whether it's doing charity work, just helping somebody out that's down on their luck, you know, why he would always coach up the young guys coming up behind him trying to take his job. And, and the one thing that he kept saying uh, throughout his whole speech is, if you can, you must. And that was just what his motivator was throughout his life, throughout his career, and his charity work that he does now that he doesn't play anymore. Just, if you can, you must. Right. And that really stuck with me. I love that guy. I like that. All right, Matt. Um, well, what about you, Andrew? Yeah, All what about right. you? For me, I was going to say Josh Allen. J.P. Lawson. No. Uh, God, no. <laughs> I mean, I personally don't – I haven't watched any of that Bills with Jim Kelly, and unfortunately I never really watched Doug Flutie, so I don't really know those Bills. i probably say I really started watching the Bills again when we had J.P. Lossman, um, Trent Edwards. No, mm-hmm. no, nothing really too exciting, but current. if I had to pick a current Bills – I'd pick either Josh Allen or I'd pick Jerry Hughes just because those guys are those those guys are men. <laughs> like I love, I love this guy. I think Trey White's an honorable oh, mention definitely. too. I think I, you'd have a lot of fun with, with Trey with Trey White. Yeah, I can yeah. with Trey White, but I I'm not scoring on him, so I don't gotta yeah, I gotta do something yeah. else. He just seems like a fun guy. Yeah. Yeah, he seems like a great guy. Good season. Yeah, he had humor. a pretty good season. Uh speaking of the season, Justin. Uh so just as a Bills fan, you know, it sounds like you're kind of Andrew's age range, a little bit younger, didn't have, you know, as much of the the terribly painful days, but still still a good number of them. So just as a Bills fan, what did last year mean to you, like the success that we had, how much fun it was? What did that mean to you as a Bills fan? It meant everything, you know. I mean, for the first time in my, like, young adult life, I guess you could say, it's like the Bills have given us hope, right? It's... You know, uh, you know, it's it's one thing to make the playoffs, right? We, we we broke the curse in 2017 or whatever when you know making the playoffs, but you know, three points against the Jags isn't really like that's nothing to write home about. You we know, backed what I mean? in that year. Yeah, so you know, it was great to get, break the curse, but you know, this year, you know, we have that that heartbreaking loss in Week 10 in Arizona, which I was in Arizona for, by the way. I didn't go to the game, but um, I was in Arizona when we lost that game. But then. You take the bye week, and then you win out the rest of the season, six straight. You know what I mean? Then you bring that into the playoffs, and you beat the Colts, you beat the Ravens, and you finally get to the AFC Championship to face the former champions. Like, that's what it's, what it's all about. You know what I mean? It's finally, like, we are uh, the real deal. You know, we're contender. You know, we're not just scrapping for a wild card spot, you know? Um, I think that really started not with Josh, obviously, but with um, McDermott and Bean. You know, they they brought a lot to this organization as far as roster moves and um, you know the, the culture that they're they're building. So um, specifically this last season to, to to you know do the best that I've ever seen a Bills team do, and a lot of people obviously, if you're not you know from have weren't around for the '90s, it's just it gave us a lot of hope, and I just I cannot wait for the season. Uh, I think we're going to run it back. I think we're going to we're going to do the same thing. Uh, obviously, it's tough to do that two years in a row, and you know there's a lot of good teams and a lot of good players. But I, I have full faith in this organization. That might be the f- well. First off, love the answer, and Thank you. I agree with you on so many levels. And for me personally, I think it's absolutely a possibility because 
of the office that we have. It, in, and I explained this in you know the news update video that we did on our Facebook page. But this is the first time in my Buffalo Bills fan life that I can actually look at the general manager and go like, wow. That's, he's a lot smarter than me. That decision <laughs> makes sense. He's competent. He's he's making good choices. So I agree with you. That And this season meant so much to me just because I have never witnessed something like that in my entire life. Um, Justin, do you want to speak on anything about that? No, I mean, like you were saying that – just like, you know, we made the playoffs in 2017 and it was, you know, we backed into the playoffs. We we got in there. We didn't really look like we belonged, whatever. Um, but then going forward, it's what I love most about the Bills is it's not just a collection of players and a football team. It's how it bleeds into the community. And, you know, that breath of life that the football team having that life just spreads like an infection throughout the, a good infection. But it goes through the whole community. Right. You know, the whole city's just a better place to be at on a Monday morning after a Bills win. Everybody's totally. all chipper. It's a great time. Right. Yeah. I mean, I live down in Allentown, so, you know, they're hanging banners, Josh Allentown, and Allentown Pizza changed their sign. And, you know, I, I haven't felt – I was talking to my buddy about this. I don't think I, we've felt something like that since, like, the party in the Plaza days with the Sabres when they made that run with uh, – you know, they're ugly slug jerseys, unfortunately. But back in, like, what was that, like, 07, 08? 07, right? rare, jury. Yeah, Roy. I mean, that was, those days were, like, amazing, right? Like, you felt the electricity in the city when the Sabres were winning and were going deeper into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for, for finally for the Bills to be that way, because the Bills have been such a big part of this community, the city, since they were, you know, around, right? Since, like, this 1960, right? right. So. You know, to you know, all the old timers, you know, get to have their fun with the early '90s. I know we didn't win one, but still pretty awesome to make four Super Bowls right during that mm-hmm. time. But we didn't have that. We didn't get that. It was so many years. You, you mentioned J.P. Lossman, like he was besides like Flutie or whatever. Like he was probably maybe Drew Bledsoe, but like Lossman is like one of the first quarterbacks I vividly remember watching, and it's just like years of mediocrity seven and nine and eight and eight and stuff like that so it was 80 yard touchdown or an incomplete pass (laughs) right right so to make the championship game this year and to do what we did and you know we hung 56 on the dolphins in the last game of the season and half of them were from our backup stuff like that it was just you know the denver game to clinch it like it was just it was an amazing season you know yeah and it it it, I, i i agree season meant a lot it was like everything you ever wanted to actually to happen, but it actually happened. And mm-hmm. you can finally silence those naysayers. And you can celebrate. Some people celebrate by, you know, high fiving, gloating, drinking, and other people eat a bunch of wings. So that's my next question. You should you should <laughs> you should have known Matt, Matt that I would ask you this question. Let us know. Ranch, blue trees. Drum, flat, and where's the best place to get a wing in Buffalo, in your personal opinion? I, I feel like I shouldn't even have to answer that question, the first question you asked me. I feel like if anyone from Buffalo says ranch, you're automatically, you got to move away. To be That's what we thought last time. And it's it's not, we haven't started off too hot with that question. We're hoping yes. we can get redemption with you. So we'll, we'll go Rudy's, we'll go Rudy's Blue Cheese for sure, 100%. Oh. Um, Flats, I feel like you get more bang for your buck. Maybe it's just me, okay. but I just feel like I don't know. I like I like a, a flat wing better than a drum. Okay. Um, so I'll go flats, and then um, you said favorite place for wings. Yeah, or? yeah. Favorite or best. Fa- place? I you know I I heard nine eleven taverns really good. I've never made it out there unfortunately. So mm-hmm. um, I maybe I'm partial because I live in Allentown, but I, I gotta say Gabe's Gate. Yes. Gabe's Gate is like I think Gabe's Gate's like top two three wings in buffalo and i'll say that because i haven't been to 911. so i i'm confident that gabe's gate has one of the best wings in the city i knew you would say that <laughs> i love gabe's gate and i'm not lying we haven't we didn't like rehearse this interview whatsoever i just had a feeling he would say gabriel's gate so very proud that you, you said that you know your guys <laughs> yeah of course um all right matt do you have any more questions for us? Um, anything? Any shout outs you want to give? Uh, no shout outs. I want to know what, what what do you guys like for wings? What are you two, What are your favorite spots in the city? Oh, mine's not in the city. It's uh, 
I think it's considered Tanawanda. Kelly's Corner. Oh, Kelly's course. Corner. In Kenmore, that's yeah. Kenmore. I think. I think it's on. That would I think be, it's on Delaware. It would technically still be North Buffalo, but we won't get yeah, technical. Man. But it, it's been a while things. since I've been out there. Mm-hmm. But just that, just that hole in the wall bar that knows how to cook wings, right? Yeah. I love it there. Yeah, for me, obviously, it's blue cheese. I don't really necessarily care if it's a drum or flat. I just like it the crispiest, so I'm annoying. I, I, I asked for it to get fried hard, and I actually put the sauce on the side so it can crisp up the most, and then I kind of like dress it myself and then dip it. And personally, Gabriel's Gate, yes, that, that's where I'm going. All right. That's just my personal preference. Yeah, <laughs> All right. I agree. All right, uh, Matt, where can the people find you if they want to hear more about uh, about who you are and your build oh, life? Oh, man. Um, yeah, you can Instagram and Twitter, both the same handle, Matty Melch, M-A-T-T-Y-M-E-L-C-H, just my name. So uh, if you want to go ahead and follow me on there, that's that's fine. All right, Matt. Well, you know, it's I, I can't say it was a pleasure because it was a blast having you on this show. <laughs> I, I I knew I so I reached out to Matt like maybe four days ago and he was like absolutely without a, without a doubt he wanted to be on the show so I'm glad you were enthusiastic of coming on the show and we appreciate you being on here and uh, you're a great guest I appreciate it appreciate you guys having me you guys have a great podcast so I'm excited to see what you guys do in the future absolutely thanks for coming on Matt yeah man yeah thanks a lot guys go Bills All right. go Bills go Bills. If you'd like to join our show, you can send us an email at the Wandering Buffalo Podcast at Gmail or give us a DM on our social media accounts by searching the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back in, everyone. We're going to jump into the tight end room. And right off the bat, this room needs an upgrade. In my personal opinion, Bean said it himself on the post interview, postseason interview. I'm curious on how the Bills do it, but let's assess what we have under the hood. Let's start with Dawson Knox. Dawson Knox, he's up and down because he's still learning the position, in my personal opinion. That and injuries. But you got to look at someone like Logan Thomas. He was a converted quarterback to tight end. It took him some time, took him a long time, and now he's looking pretty good in Washington. So everything I said before, I think there's ups and downs with Dawson Knox. He's let's talk about the ups. Amazing plays from this man. Some real good highlight plays. I'm I'm talking about like that one arm grab at the end of the second half of Patriots Monday night. I'm think I'm talking about the Bengals smackdown tr- stiff arm truck stick. I'm talking like shift right on your <laughs> joystick to hit the truck. That stuff. And let's talk about the bad. Drops, 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 drops. I I don't know if it was in the Seahawks game, but there was a ball that got tossed right in his hands, and he dropped it, and he was just alone. It, stuff like that kind of frustrates me, but I know he can get better. He's super athletic, similar to four to the Ford point I made on last week's episode. It's too early to say he's a bust, and I don't think he is a bust. He's going into year three, which is where we see a lot of good things. Justin, how do you feel about Dawson Knox? Uh, so he's probably easy, easily the most frustrating player on the Bills at times Mm -hmm. um but i love the kid i mean last year he had a tough year with injuries he had covid you know he's still a developing guy uh he came from college i think he only took like a thousand snaps in college something like that but it it was in an old miss offense that didn't really use the tight end um his upside is incredible he has the physical traits the athletic ability to be right up there with the best tight ends in the league. Um, The, the narrative on him is just his drops Uh, from year one to year two, he cut his drops in half. Um, So he's already developing in that fashion. I think the most frustrating thing with him though, is he'll make these ridiculous circus catches, you know, taking hits one hand in them, all that, 
you know, going right into contact. And then he'll he'll have, like, the same game. He'll be running wide open. He drops that ball. So it's just kind of like, I don't, is it a mental piece that he needs to work on? I don't know. But going forward, he's my tight end one. Yeah. Um, I'm not interested in throwing money at these people. Mm-hmm. Um, John U. Smith got signed today anyways. I, that's a name that I heard, you know, some talk about the Bills going after. But right, Dawson Knox is my guy for next year. Yeah, you know, when I look at, his, when I look at Dawson Knox, I feel like it's how you look at a zebra and you go like, well, is it black with white stripes or is it white with black stripes? <laughs> you know, we just don't know yet. And it's got to take some time before we actually know what Dawson Knox truly is. Moving on to his backup, Tyler Croft. Kind of had a weird start with the Bills, right? Injury prone, breaks his foot, comes on, has a decent show out after he's healthy, catches that touchdown pass in the Steelers game in the Sunday night football to send the Bills basically to the wild card game in Houston. We're not going to get into that too much. Um, After that season... Bean restructures him because, in my opinion, he's like, well, I don't know if you're healthy enough. So this is going to be – this 2020 season is going to be your last year. Um, ends up being healthy for the, all of it, but a healthy scratch for a good majority of it. And I think his wife took to social media and was pretty upset that he was, you know, a healthy scratch or that he was a close contact because they drove, like, a player home that – was you know tested positive it kind of made me think maybe he was a little upset with the team or at least his wife was so we don't we don't really know what his mentality towards the team is but like i said eventually he became a healthy scratch he's a free agent do we resign it or or is it like adios also he kind of looks like (laughs) i don't know why but tyler croft kind of reminds me of like the veg, uh, the cucumber from Veggie Tales. <laughs> I don't know why I think about that. When I, I knew you were gonna go there. He just looks like that. You know, just tell tell me how you feel about him, Justin. Um, so a lot of what you said, he he kind of had an up and down first year. He had the weird injuries. Um, he's kind of my sneaky pick for, you know, that veteran. I'm gonna get crap for this. But he's kind of my sneaky pick for that, you know, tight end two backing up Dawson Knox. You don't really have to ask him to do a lot. Um, we'll see what he gets on the free agent market, but I don't think it's going to be much at this point. Mm-hmm. And in the action that we saw with him last year, he, he was kind of steady. You know, he'd have a lot of those, like, four catches, 40 yards, maybe throw a touchdown in. You know, you can trust him in his blocking assignments. When he comes in and spot duty, you know, he's not going to split your seam and take it for a 70-yard touchdown, but kind of just like uh, he can move the chain sometimes kind of guy. Uh, and our offense being so wide rece- wide receiver heavy, I don't really need my tight end two to be doing all that much. So, right. you know, see what shakes out with the free agent market, but, you know, if some of these guys are getting huge contracts... I'm not really opposed to bringing him back on a like a two million dollar deal just to kind of have some safety at the position. Right, if he takes that kind of deal. Spe- speaking of two million, let's talk about Lee Smith. He is an elite, elite blocking tight end. I trust him to block a defensive end one v one, and I'm gonna use the asterisk right here because unless it's Khalil Mack or you know a Bosa. TJ or Watt, you know, then obviously he could get got. And he could even get got by a regular defensive end, but he's pretty good at blocking. Um, he even produces in the passing game a little more than I personally expected. And when he gets the rock, he's looking for contact. He's not trying to, like, juke someone out. He's just rolling down the field like a bowling ball. He said recently, recently on a radio show that he's considering retirement, and if he you know, does can does go into retirement or if the Bills cut him, they could get two point two million dollars in savings. I love this guy. He picks up he picked up Josh um 
when he threw a pick uh, early in his career. He says he loves him like a brother, and I'm sure that meant a lot to Josh. We'll see what happens with them, but Justin, tell us your thoughts about Lee Smith. I, I love me some Lee Smith. Um, he's kind of got that like Feliciano edge to him, mm-hmm. or you kind of you just want to rally around the dude. Um, we talked about his blocking already, but I mean, I would I would plug him in at right tackle over probably about. 35 40 percent of the rest of the league the dude is a good blocker um unfortunately i mean at his cap hit right now he's getting a little older you know 2.5 in savings isn't isn't really a small amount and i think that's kind of a role that you want to be able to replace i think one of the things with lee smith is when he comes into the game it used to work a lot where, you know, he'd slip out into the seam and get himself a little touchdown grab. And by a lot, I mean like once a year. <laughs> um, I think the it's kind of obvious run situations when he comes in now or they're looking for that little tight end slip screen. The leak, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it becomes a little bit predictable and I, I kind of want somebody in that spot with a little bit more uh, dynamic traits. Um, they can run a, going a little bit more of a route tree. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, may, well, maybe maybe Tommy Sweeney can order something like that. Speaking of which, uh, there's not much to say here about Tommy Sweeney, except I hope you get well. You got myocarditis. It's a pretty rare inflammation of your heart. So enough said about that. You don't really want to mess around that and have to deal with COVID and doing physical exercises. I liked him in the preseason um, in the Carolina game. He looked pretty good there, but again, that's preseason. And then there's Reggie Gilliam. He's basically a fallback. I love that he made the team as an undrafted free agent. Uh, other than that, I don't really have too much to say about these two. Justin? Yeah, uh, Sweeney, for being a rookie seventh-round pick, he he had some early flashes. And honestly, a guy like that, you're kind of looking for a reserve role. So first and foremost, I hope that he's healthy. You know, this is sometimes we lose it in the X's and O's. This is bigger than football. You know, that guy's health comes first. Mm -hmm. So if he is healthy and able to play, I'm I'm interested in seeing what he has. Um, We didn't really get a chance to get a good look at him. Um, Reggie Gilliam. I, I love this dude's heart, um, whether he sticks around long-term or not. I don't know. UDFA, you know, it's hard to stick around in the NFL. But, I mean, this dude, when he found out pro days and the NFL combine and all that was getting canceled due to COVID, he went out, bought himself some, some camera uh, equipment, went out to Walmart. This dude filmed his own pro day sent it to teams to, like, just try to make sure he had the best chance possible to get into the league. And, you know, you don't see a ton of stories like that where these people, like, you know, don't just let their college career speak for themselves. He went out and made sure everybody was getting one last look at Reggie Gilliam. Mm. I think that's a dude worth betting on a little bit. Right. He had, he had his moments in his first year. We'll, we'll see what he continues developing as. Yeah, it sounds like he, he, he wrote his story instead of his right. story be written for him. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, that pretty much wraps up the tight end room, so let's transition to the special teamers, specifically the kicker and the punters. Let's start with Tyler Bass. There was a lot of hate for this kid when he started off shaky, but I was confident he would bounce back. I was very confident. I was not. A lot of people were saying stuff like Bass is ass and, you know, he's not good. He's choking. I, I'm telling you, I, I had faith. And my faith paid off. He broke franchise record. Him and Bojo finally figured out that snap issue. I don't know if they sat down and watched Ace Ventura. But I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. And... I don't know why people are having this trouble with coming up with a nickname for Tyler Bass, like Bassomatic. I personally like the name t 
high dollar sign because the guy is money and he's a baller on the team. That's that. Those are my thoughts about Tyler Bass. Justin, what about you? And what's your nickname he's for one him? I, he's he's one eye tie. One eye. Okay. Come on, man. He does the one eye with the eye black. Yeah. Isn't that just low hanging fruit? Yeah, yeah. You know it, it is, but I didn't think about it. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, he's um. So initially with his struggles, I was kind of um. My initial thoughts on it were. You know, this team looks like it's too good to be trusting a rookie kicker in these big moments. Um, he made me eat crow. Uh, I was I wanted Hauschka back after, like, week three. But, you know, they, they being Brandon Bean and McDermott, are seeing this guy every day, Heath Farwell, um, just knowing what they had in him, that they were willing to let Hauschka go. Mm-hmm. Um, these guys are smarter than me. You know, they made the move for a reason. Um, it was really nice seeing, you know, a kicker be able to trot out there and attempt a 50 yard field goal and Hauschka didn't really have that leg anymore. So right. that being said, we haven't, we haven't really had the opportunity to see him like in a clutch game winning moment because mm-hmm. we were winning most of our games by like double digits. I'd like to see what kind of guts he has on that type of moment, mm-hmm. you know, without it being with the playoffs on the line or something like that. I'd like to see a little bit more of that throughout the season. Maybe keep a couple games close so we can give Bass his moment. Right. Well, hopefully it won't have to come to a Bass moment, but if it does, I got faith that he can do it. I mean, he broke the record back-to-back times for kicking the longest field goal in Arrowhead Stadium in the AFC Championship game. So that was pretty cool. I like him. Uh, moving on to Corey Bajorquez. You know, rookie season... I I liked him just because we took him for the Patriots, but him as a punter, I hated him. (laughs) Last year, I didn't mind him that much. He got a little better. I was hoping the Bills would have, you know, found some type of replacement for him through the draft or some undrafted free agent. And this year, I liked him. But was that because... The offense did so well. He barely saw. Him. Yeah, you know, he had that highlight coffin corner punt, which you never see, which is pretty cool. He was a res- he's a re- uh, restricted free agent. Do we resign him? I don't know, Justin. What what do you do? What what do you, how do you feel about Corey Borges? Uh, so I go back and forth on this a little bit. Um, having watched his struggles early with with the team. And then him coming around, and you know this dude had a, he had a season long kick of fifty or seventy two yards. He averaged something over fifty yards for the season. Like he had a great season for a punter. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I don't know if it's going to be an underutilized position. How much I want to invest dollar wise in the position where we could bring in a street free agent and pay him you know a million bucks instead of a three million dollar punter. Um, that one I'm gonna leave up to Bean. I don't. Know. I'd like to see him stick around, just for the continuity across the board. Um, but I don't know what the price range is gonna work out to be. Right. You know, I think about how how much faith I have in Tyler Bass. Maybe I should have some more faith in Corey Bajorquez. So I'm gonna I'm take. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back on my word. I I want Corey Bajorquez back. I think he's developed and gotten better after each year. So I I hope he is back on a you know whatever team friendly deal so maybe this something similar to Andre Smith's deal so that'd be pretty cool. He's he still has miles and miles to go before he fills Brian Mormon's shoes for me though. Oh yeah, absolutely. No one that dude is a legend. Yeah. <laughs> for good and bad reasons, right? I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about that uh what Pro Bowl where he gets cracked by Sean Taylor. <laughs> He popped right back up. Yeah, but I remember watching that as a kid. I was like, ooh, well, like, that would happen if to she, a Bills punter. <laughs> if Sean Taylor hit me like that, you'd be putting me in the ground. Right. Uh, let's move on to some free agents. Uh, as Justin alluded to before, Johnny Smith got signed. So we'll, we'll just... Uh, Rob Gronkowski as well signed, uh, re-signed with Tampa Bay. Yeah, so, I almost said New England. Yeah, well, so we're going to skip over some of these uh, available free agents here. 
I personally think this is what this is the way the Bills should upgrade the tight end room if they think they need to. I'm not sure if we're going to get anyone on the top free free agent lists. Tight end is a slow developing position. I don't think it's optimal for us to draft a high prospect, let's say Kyle Pitts, and try to juggle two developments at once. Now, I understand Kyle Pitts is a freak of nature, and if the Bills can... He is pro-ready. Yeah, it, if that's what they were saying about, what's his name, from Detroit, Hawkinson, and he was still developing. He's still developing now, but you know Kyle Pitts is a monster, and if the Bills got him, I'm not going to be upset. But I also wouldn't expect him to ball out his rookie year. And it wouldn't upset me if he didn't. That being said, let's get into some of these top free agents. And there's about like four of them. Justin, yes or no of these. Tell me why I don't want to play this game with me today. <laughs> I love it. Hunter Henry, LA no. Chargers. No. John R. Smith, he's not even available. Gerald Everett, LA Rams. I'm pretty sure he's not nope. available either. Rob Gronkowski, uh, Gronkowski, he did mention that it'd be interesting playing for the Bills, but of course he's just going to run it back with the page. Uh, yeah, he resigned. I'm sorry, I, I almost called them the Patriots, but you know they're the Bucks. I did the same thing. Um, Jared Cook. Uh, interesting to me, but old veteran. Yeah, I so he kind of fits the build of what I'd be looking for if we went the free agency route mm-hmm. of just kind of an older veteran that, you know, he's going to take care of the blocking assignments, um, all that. Uh, but I am disagreeing with you. that I'm not addressing this position in free agency. I'm I'm looking at the draft. Okay. And then the last person, Mo Alley Cox, who I didn't even know who was, <laughs> who that person was until the playoff games because I was like, who caught this pass? Mo he picked Ali on Cox? us enough in the playoffs that I'd put him on my team. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think that wraps up some free agents, unless you have any you want to talk about real quick. Uh, yeah. So I kind of mentioned before my sneaky free agent is Tyler Croft. Yeah. Um, it's it's easy, all those things. Um, but Dan Arnold out of Arizona. Yeah. Um, he's interesting to me because I don't think he's going to be the type of guy to command – you know, this Hunter Henry contract, Hunter Henry's probably going to get ten, twelve million million a year. Um, so for, for the system that the bills run, um, they run a lot of 10, 11 personnel. If anybody out there doesn't know the difference between 10, 11, 12, whatever. Um, so you got five linemen in the quarterback leaves five positions left over. Um, so the first number is the number of running backs in the formation, Second number is the number of tight ends. Remaining number is the receivers. Um, so the Bills weren't a very 12 personnel heavy team last year. Maybe it's because of the talent there. Um, but if we're going to continue running 10, 11 personnel all the time, it's very wide receiver focused. I don't really see the need to spend big money on a tight end too. Yeah. And I still think there's enough potential in Dawson Knox that I don't really have the interest in in signing somebody to be a tight end one. Um, so it's not really a spot where I want to spend a lot of money. But I think Dan Arnold with his size, he's kind of got similar physical tools to Dawson Knox. I think the pairing of them two together might be something interesting. Yeah, if I were to sign, if I had to pick a free agent to sign, I'd pick Dan Arnold. Yeah. Um, moving on to he's some... He's got a stupid vertical too. <laughs> moving on to some draft prospects. Uh, I know you have a good list here to go off of, or two or three guys. I'm just going to speak real quick. The only one that I personally know is Kyle Pitts. Uh, I'm sorry, Kyle Pitts, and he's a beast. He's not going to be in range. And again, I don't think it's wise for the Bills to juggle two projects at once because of the slow developing position. But I can be swayed. So, Justin, let me know. Um, so yeah, sure. Pitts is kind of a pipe dream scenario. He's probably going in the top 10, but if anybody said they didn't want Kyle Pitts on their team, they'd be lying to you. Right. Um, so this kind of actually 
when I was writing this up was before the re-signing of Milano, um, Daryl Williams, John Feliciano. Um, so my draft list was kind of looking more towards offensive line or linebacker at the top of the draft. Uh, I think we're just in a beautiful spot right now where there's really no serious position of need. The biggest need is probably CB2. Yeah, CB2. Um, so I don't hate if we go CB2 in the first round and then second round maybe we look at one of these higher-end tight ends. Um, so I was watching this film with our producer Jake the other day. Um, Pat Fryermuth was a guy that I didn't know much about out of Penn State. Um, oh, I've six, seen five, him. Two, six, five, two fifty. Uh, they call this guy Baby Gronk. Boy, did he earn the nickname. He was going into all the dirty spots on the field. You think the play's over and he breaks another tackle. Mm-hmm. He's just looking for contact. He's, he can coach Zach Moss on the making business decisions. He's a guy that I really like, and I think he fits that Buffalo mold really well. Um, the other guy... I really like his Brevin Jordan out of Miami. Um, So he's kind of like that do-everything type of tight end. He'll put his hand in the dirt. He blocks in line. He'll split out. He'll go in the backfield. Um, A lot of these new-age NFL tight ends are kind of just like really big receivers. Um, They don't often come into the league as like a polished block or anything like that. I think Brevin Jordan kind of gives you – that flexibility earlier on and especially if we're looking for like the tight end two um with some blocking capabilities to start out in our system i think those two guys are are both really good options right if you can get baby gronk or baby gronk in the building that that'd be pretty that'd be pretty good yeah his film was stupid fun yeah to watch. i i forgot about who this person was until you used that nickname and i was like oh that guy yeah <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Um, ne- catch us on our episode next week where we're, we haven't really figured out what we're going to do, but it should be a good episode. Um, make sure you subscribe, rate, and review. Again, you can find us on social media by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. And until then, we'll see you next week. Justin, where can the people find you? You can find me on social medias at jgods22. You can always communicate with us through um, the podcast page. Hit us up if you ever want to join the show or anything like that. We're always trying to look to bring some people on and get your thoughts on the Bills. Absolutely. All right, go Bills. Go Bills. (laughs)